Alors, bon. <coughs> All right. Here we are. Hey, Michael. Okay, so while we get started, here's a wrist check. I've been wearing this a lot lately. This is the Logical One Roman Gautier titanium enamel dial. It's just a great watch. It wears really nicely. It's a good, uh, it's a good example of how I think people a lot of times on the internet, they get lost in kind of more colorful versions and stuff because they look cooler on Instagram. But this, uh, this titanium version really is amazing on the wrist. Hey, from Italy. That's cool. Hi, Paolo. Italy sounds nice. What part of Italy? Any questions? Or are we just going to all say hi to each other? That's fine, too. I'm trying to do this maybe every Friday. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I did it last week, and I have a lot of questions, but I don't know if we'll run out. I don't know how much there is to talk about. Um, some releases this week that were cool. Uh, right after I made my last video, the new Grubel Sport Watch came out, which I thought was awesome. I really, really desperately want one, basically. Um, I haven't seen it in person yet, of course. I don't, I don't know that many people have. When I do, I will share better thoughts. I'm interested to see how the size works. You know, the case is um, sort of curved. Uh, it's a big case, but it's curved down. So it's a, it's a new shape and should be cool. Verona. Cool, Paolo. Very Shakespearean. Well, this is an international day here. We got Italy, we got the UK. Hi, Parash. Oh man, that Cayenne is insane, Michael. You can't even imagine. In person, it's like every little piece set. It's crazy how that could even be made. Wow, Nepal. I only have a few people in here and they're from all over. Uh, what do I think of a 5167 as a daily do anything watch? It's great. You'd be hard pressed to beat it. They've just gotten a little bit expensive, you know, at current prices. I don't know how I feel about them, but just as a watch, it's a great watch. Uh, Reshep Reshepi. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've discussed that before. They're obviously amazing. I had that Acrivia Turbion, which I sold. Um, last week, and uh, uh, the chronometer is, is amazing. You should watch my Acrivia review if you haven't, James. Um, but yeah, people are going nuts over that watch, and for good reason. I think back to the 5167 question. I think about this sort of daily watch thing a lot. Um, I've kind of gotten used to wearing kind of crazier watches that people would not necessarily wear as often. Uh, and, and you kind of learn to wear things carefully. Uh, when I really want to bang things around, I, I wear Submariner. Uh, so that's my kind of go-to do anything. But a 5167 would also be nice. Uh, Logical One Fragile? No. I, I, I've worn, I've, I've sold probably as many Logical Ones as anybody on the planet. I haven't had any issues. Um, I've worn, this was my personal watch and I sold it and then I actually bought it back uh, and I've worn it quite a bit and the guy I sold it to, I think wore it. And uh, no, I don't see why it would be fragile. So to me in this titanium version, I would easily wear this as like a daily wearer watch. Um, 
I, I think it would be hard pressed to beat this uh, for something like that. And it takes different straps really well. This is on the, uh, the kind of dark, it's like a very, very dark charcoal or like a light black um, strap that it came with. But if you look on my website, I, I put it on like a leather aviator strap. It looks cool on that. So um, great watch. 5270p. Uh, a bit too much being full gold. Well, 5270p is not full gold. P would be platinum. If you mean something else, because you've got the O01, so you got a bracelet. I don't know exactly what you mean. I love watches on bracelets. I would always take a bracelet. I never think it's too much. Okay, 5270R. Yeah, go for it. I love it. Um, I've actually been talking to uh, Roman at Luxury Bazaar recently. He's got a... Uh, a, an AP Grand Complication Jewel Audemars that's rose gold skeleton on a rose gold bracelet, which is like, of course, it's way over the top, but it's awesome and I kind of want to buy it. Thoughts on Ming Slate? This is a good question. I know Ming. Um, I actually made a piece unique uh, Oxen Jr. for my son with Ming. I liked his design of, the, of one of the unique pieces that he made. Um, for himself, and then we worked on customizing it uh, for me and my son. And he's a he's a really good guy, very detail oriented. I actually haven't seen any of the Ming brand watches in person, uh, but I really love the idea of kind of a quality, um, you know, like a, a high quality, well thought out enthusiast watch in that price range. To me, is pretty awesome. So um, I haven't bought one just because it's not. It's not really what I do. Um, it's not really my wheelhouse. Uh, if I maybe one day I'll like get one in as trade and be able to wear it for a little while. But uh, but I do really like the watch. Uh, Daytona Zenith P serial. I have no idea. I know like almost nothing about Rolex. I mean I know more than like the Starbucks barista down the street. But I'm sure tons of you guys know more than me. And if you're asking me that question, you probably know more than me. So I won't even comment. Roman Gautier Micro Rotor, also a cool watch. I like the Logical One better. And at the, at, especially at pre-owned prices, it's not that much more. So I would always go Logical One. But the, but the Micro Rotor is really cool too. And everybody loves a good Micro Rotor. Other watches I bought my son. Uh, he just turned one. Yeah, so I had this thing with my son. He, he's, my son is uh, just about to be nine. And he, for years, has loved all the watches that I get in. I show him every watch that comes in, and he learns about it. And then he always asks me, like, Dad, can you keep this one? I say, no, I, I got to sell it. It's my business. <laughs> so I put food on the table. Um, and so I decided uh, a few years ago that I would make a watch custom uh, for him and it could be his. So whenever he says, you know, can you keep, no, well, no, you've got this one. It's in the safe. And we go look at it. And I show him how to set it. And I wear it sometimes so he can, you know, have a memory of me having it. But it's got engravings and things that are personalized to him. Um, and so that's kind of how I got around that. Now he knows that he has this one special watch that's never going to go anywhere. Uh, other watches that I bought him just recently, he's been asking me for an automatic watch that he can wear. Uh, and so I have this, he doesn't know it yet. Don't tell him. I don't think he watches my YouTube channel. Um, but I bought the original Hodinkee uh, Swatch System 51 a few years ago. I bought a few of them and I gave them as gifts. And uh, he's always liked mine. So I'm going to give him the Swatch System 51 that I kept. Um, and he's going to think it's cool that they're like three or 400 bucks on eBay too. He loves stuff like that. So that will be his first uh, automatic watch that he can actually wear. Thoughts on DeWitt? Uh, I would stay away from DeWitt if I were you. I think the brand is basically dead. Uh, I wouldn't put any money into a dead brand, even if, um, you know, uh, even if it were, were cheap. I would find something else. I don't know that particular model, so I don't know what to recommend as like a similar thing, but I would look for something else. 
thanks, James. That's what I try to do. You know, the whole point of this, when I started selling watches, you know, my, my background was in finance and then I helped Max with MBNF and started and ran MBNF North America. And I always kind of resisted uh, this buy and sell business. I didn't want to be just like a watch dealer. But more and more, I got like annoyed at the big brand stuff and like all these, uh, you know, I kept seeing people buy watches and pay a lot of money for things that I didn't think was very good. Uh, so kind of the whole reason uh, that I do this channel and, uh, and one of the main things that keeps me going in my business is I really like to educate people on what I think are the really good watches out there and things that are, are actually worth spending this ridiculous amount of money on versus these sort of commodities where you're just propping up uh, some massive company's bottom line. So thank you for noticing. And that's, uh, that's my perspective and why I do this. Uh, what do I think of Richard Lang jump, jumping seconds? Again, it's not really what I do. It's not, not my sort of thing, but I'm well on record saying I think Longa has some of the best quality of any of the bigger brands. And uh, if you like the watch, I would go for it. Uh, but for me, I'd, I'd go indie. What's up? Rocking a 50 Fathoms flyback. Nice. My first nice watch, I kind of, I think I went over it in the last video, or maybe it was on Instagram. The way I got into these kind of high-end watches was I wanted to buy one nice watch. I wanted to spend about five grand, and it was going to be my one watch to keep forever. And I had some idea that probably there was something better out there than Rolex, but I didn't know it. So I found Time Zone and I found the Purists Forum. This was in like 2002. And at the time, everybody was really into Blancpain, and I ended up buying a Blancpain Flyback Chrono. That was my first nice watch that I bought. So I'll always have a, a soft spot for Blancpain. Michael's got a Speedy Pro. Can't go wrong with the Speedy Pro. Uh, thinking about doing more of them or more often? Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely, uh, these Q and A's are nice because I don't always know what to talk about in a podcast. You know, the reviews are easy because I get a watch in. If it's something that I haven't reviewed before, then, you know, I flip on the camera and talk. The podcasts are a little bit harder because unless I have some idea in my mind that I want to discuss, I don't know what it, what to talk about. So these Q and A's are pretty cool. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to do these pretty much every Friday. Uh, and then they, they actually last on YouTube. I guess they guess get posted up onto my channel. And so uh, so those will be around. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to do more of all of this. I was moving my office over the last several months and moving my house and everything was a little bit crazy. Um, but in this new spot, I'm gonna be able to set up like a dedicated studio area, which will also make it much easier. Um, so, because otherwise every time I, I do something, I gotta clean up my desk and, and uh, try to get lighting and, and this, that, and the other. Uh, so I'll be able to do better stuff soon. Uh, any interesting indie brands on the horizon? I mean, I think everybody knows that the, the kind of up and comer this year uh, that's really gotten the attention has been Acrevia and Reshep Reshepi. Um, I'm on uh, record as really liking Roman Gautier. I really like the Gronfeld brothers and what they're doing. Um, but in terms of the, you know, you guys have all heard of all those and I've done reviews, uh, in terms of people even smaller than that, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what else is up and coming. I, I really like Bayat Haldeman, which nobody really pays attention to, but he's definitely not like up and coming. He's been around for a while and sort of does his few watches that he does. And that's kind of it, but he's a cool one to check out if you haven't seen him. Thoughts on AP relying on multiplying versions of the Royal Oak. Uh, I love AP. They're they're probably my favorite bigger brand. Um, the Royal Oak is just their successful watch. It's it's like it's it's very difficult to come up with uh, new different successful lines, and and they they have one. They have an iconic product, so they they're gonna have to make you know a decent amount of them uh, and, and do whatever they can to make those interesting. Um, so I don't really knock them for that. And they've tried a lot of things. Like I thought the millinery were cool. I actually think the Jules Audemars case is really cool. 
uh, the, I guess we'll see what ends up happening with code 1159. But, uh, but I think even their other watches are interesting and more interesting than a lot of other brands. But everybody wants Royal Oak, so. Uh, most of my inventory is between 30 and 100. Any recommendations under 30? Yeah, it is tough because a lot of this stuff, it just costs money. I'm, I'm more into this sort of small indie thing and it costs a lot to make these things. So um, I try to buy all the cool watches that I see under there, um, but there isn't a lot always. Uh, you can find uh, decent Laurent Ferriers under 30. There's a lot of good Jorns in that kind of 30 range. Everybody wants the Chronomet Blue and has pushed it way over 30 now. But, um, you know, Chronomet Souverain in Platinum or in Rose Gold, uh, uh, really good. Uh, Optalun, which I have the Mother of Pearl version, and it's a little bit over 30, but the regular versions are under. And even mine, I could get, you know, into the 30s on. Uh, so I, I think that's a cool one. So yeah, I would look at, I would look at maybe some Jorns. Uh, Pedro, Detroit watch guy, Langa Hein, uh, and Bulgari Octofinissimo. Uh, so Langa Hein, I, I don't know the guys. The watches look awesome. I haven't owned any, but I've seen a couple. They're really nice. However, uh, it's my understanding that, I think his name is Christian Langa. I forget his name, but the, but like the main guy behind them kind of left the company. And so that's worrisome to me. I don't know everything. I don't stay into the politics. Check it out for yourself. Um, but that would concern me a little bit. Octo Finissimo, I love. I want one badly. I really like that uh, the Japanese limited edition with the architect that they just did. Uh, and if I ever have a chance to buy one at a decent price, you will see it on my wrist. And you've got the Jordan Chronomet Souverain. There, perfect, Pedro. That's, that's uh, such a great watch for the money. Uh, prefer indie brands, aren't they dangerous in the long term? Like if they don't survive, it's founders and you, well, anybody can service most of these things. I mean, you got to know a good watchmaker, but you don't need the brand to service a watch. Uh, I don't, I don't worry about that so much, but you do want a good, respectable indie brand. You know, if somebody like, uh, like let's say FP Jorn goes away, uh, you know, he's, he's done a lot of things to have a succession plan uh, sold part of the company to uh, Chanel so they can uh, help take over and, and whatever. Um, but let's just say he didn't do that and it was just him and whatever and he went away. I think that is a brand that will would totally survive or it wouldn't hurt the pieces that he's made. If you owned one, then the value would still be there. Uh, but then you look at some of these other brands like, uh, like for example, Autlance that came on and then went away. They never kind of got past that critical juncture where they were uh, well-known and well-respected enough that the piece could stand on its own. And so then that's when start things start going and getting closed out and whatever. A lot of it also has to do with the distribution that the company has. If they sell a lot of pieces to retail, they're, they're, they don't really have their uh, financial ducks in a row, then, they kind of flame out. Maybe they have shareholder issues or whatever. They raise too much money. So they flame out. They go out of business. There's way too many watches that are made and they weren't actually sold. They get closed out on various channels at you know 10 or 20 cents on the dollar. And eventually all of the value goes to nothing. Uh, but people that are running responsible brands and doing things in the right way, I don't think you have to worry about stuff like that so much. Favorite indie sport watch? Man, see, this is hard. And this is why I keep going back to kind of Royal Oaks and stuff like that, because uh, it's really tough to find a good indie sport watch. And I per I particularly like my sport watches on a bracelet, which basically means you have nothing. Uh, but uh, Richard Meal is an indie and pretty awesome. The new Grubel sport watch, I don't know who's going to use it for sport at that price, but it's amazing. You know, if you're just looking like sporty, more casual, uh, those are awesome. Um, otherwise, man, I just go Royal Oak for a sport watch or Submariner, which I have both. Uh, where do I draw the line on an indie brand? Uh, somebody asked me this last week. 
to me, it would be uh, a brand that is not owned by a bigger brand uh, and produces less than, let's say, 1,500 pieces a year, something like that. So, yes, AP and Paddock are independent. They're not owned by a conglomerate or something like that, but they're, they're big, massive brands. Um, that's not what we mean when we say independent. There's, there's like a boutique aspect of independent watches. Have I heard of Lane watches? I've not. I'll check them out though. Excited for in 2020 in the watch world? That's a good question. Um, I don't really pay attention to like new stuff that much or get that excited about new stuff. Uh, and it's, it's actually one of the things that annoys me a little bit about the industry. These, the whole great thing about mechanical watches is that they're meant to last for a really long time. So it doesn't really matter what the new release is. And I feel like a lot of really great watches get lost to history because people are focused on the new stuff. Um, so I, I mainly look backwards. I look at what came out two, three, four, six, ten. 10, 15, 30 years ago that I think are is really cool. Not vintage, because that's not my thing either. But um, I mean, this logical one's amazing. Almost nobody owns them. You know, a hundred people on earth or fewer own them. What are they doing worrying about what comes out in 2020? Go buy one of these. It's an awesome watch. Um, or the Royal Oak Perpetual uh, stainless and platinum that I have on my website right now. You know, that watch now is uh, 15 years old. AP is not going to come out with anything that's better than that watch. That watch is awesome. Or even the carbon concept. They're, the new concepts they're coming out with are not better than the carbon concept that I have on my site. And yet uh, everybody clamors for whatever came out that year. Uh, well, five to 10 years in the future, that's the old one too. It doesn't make sense to me as a way to buy watches. So it's not really how I, I look at it. Um, what about Urban Jurgensen Sport Watch? I like Urban Jurgensen as a brand. Uh, they have a really cool history with, uh, you know, what they did with uh, uh, Derek Pratt. And I think, uh, you know, so they have, a, they have a cool history and they have some cool stuff. They, they're not necessarily who I would go to for a sport watch. Um, but, you know, whatever. Uh, is it worth checking out non-oil filled resins? Sure, why not? Resins are really cool. The designs are cool. Um, I would totally wear a Type One. So, yeah, check them out. Why is the price of the Chronomet Blue grown? I don't know. It's kind of a bubble. They don't make that many of them. People decided they want them. They're willing to pay crazy prices, and they're just you know these things where there is very little supply it doesn't take that much growth in demand to really drive the price up a lot uh, but at some point uh, things will come down to normal levels uh i was critical of vacheron i don't recall being very critical of vacheron i like vacheron as a big brand um i'm not i don't particularly like the idea of buying Richemont watches. It's just not where I want to put my money and not the type of thing that I personally want to support. Uh, but I don't know. I love some of them. Like they're the um, older chronographs, I think are amazing. Their minute repeaters are like off the charts. Awesome. Um, I, you'd have to give me a specific of what I was critical on and I could address it. Ooh, a highlight in the industry between 2010 and now. That's huge. What a huge span. Um, to me, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of the last decade is Grubel Forsey. Now, they started uh, the decade before that, but they really picked up steam in this decade. They're ridiculously expensive, and most people will never own them, and I totally get it. And, uh, uh, you know, you could have a good argument on if you could ever justify spending that much for a watch, but they really are the best watches I've ever seen. Um, and to see that brand come in and take off and do really well uh, is, is something really awesome. Um, also, there have been a bunch of really cool new indies. Uh, again, Romain Gautier, Gronfeld, uh, now Acrevia, 
Uh, Kari Vudalainen has done a ton in the last decade. Um, Devin Thune in the last decade has been incredible. So uh, all of those are kind of what I think of for this decade. Um, have I ever been hands-on with a Roger Smith? Yes, I owned one. I have a review video. Uh, go check it out in my channel. You'll see. Uh, I guess um, uh, I guess you're talking still about Chronomet Blue. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, and I think you're right. Anything else? We're at 25 minutes already, so I don't mind cutting it here if there are no other questions. Again, I'm going to try to do this more or less every Friday. Not the next one because I'm going to be out of town. Um, and maybe not the next after. I think it's, is it Christmas? It's close. We'll see. Um, uh, Voodalinen and MBNF, which brand holds better value in the long run? Both of them. They'll both be good. Um, both are run by very responsible people who do things in the right way. And they're not really, I don't know how to compare the two brands, but I would very much trust Kari or Max uh, to build a successful long-term brand. Um, Kari has that kind of handmade thing that uh, will always be respected too. And I think his pieces are a little bit undervalued currently. Um, and I think some of the MBNFs will be considered undervalued at some point. So both great. Wow, now they're coming in. Uh, Constantine Chaikin, the Joker's really cool. I've never seen one in person. Cool watch for the original money. I wouldn't pay over retail for it, personally. Um, I don't recommend any watch as an, in, as an investment. Okay, I'm gonna cut it there, guys. Uh, save your questions. Uh, come back. I see the Moser question, Jim. I'm sorry, I just have to cut it somewhere. Uh, so come back and I'm happy to talk about Moser. More on Constantine more on why I don't recommend any watch as an investment, although some of them have been really good ones, but it's just not how I like to think about watches. Okay, thanks guys. I hope this was not a waste of time. <laughs> All right, uh, if I don't come back, happy holidays and uh, you know, enjoy your time with your families.